Beyond question, the big news to come out of the wrestling and MMA world over the weekend is the news that CM Punk has signed a deal with the UFC to begin fighting in 2015. This is the big story. This is the big news. And I have to say, I think a lot of us wrestling fans aren't all that surprised that this happened. We know Punk has had a long infatuation with mixed martial arts, the UFC. We know that this is something that he's talked about in the past that he would like to do. You could just get the sense that he wanted to do it. So me personally, I know, and I know a lot of other wrestling fans, can't be all that surprised by this news. It wasn't maybe a matter of if, but when and how soon, frankly. You know, and... When I think about this CM Punk signing with the UFC and some of the stuff that's gone on with him in 2014, to me, it's kind of reminiscent of a guy going through a midlife crisis. And, you know, in a lot of ways, him leaving the WWE was like going and finding his hot blonde to fool around with that was 20 years younger. And now going to the UFC, this is maybe like his red convertible or his sports car that he's always wanted but never was able to get his hands on because of his previous attachment or his previous marriage, what have you. He's trying to figure out who he is, maybe wasn't happy with his plight, his direction in life, and he wanted to shake things up. Hey, you know what? Kudos to CM Punk for this. You know, he gets the opportunity to do what he's wanted to do. He gets the opportunity that a lot of other people probably only wish they could do or they only dream of they could do. He's a, been a top guy, a big star in pro wrestling, and now he's able to go fight in the major leagues of the mixed martial arts world, the UFC. I don't begrudge him for that at all. I applaud him for it. You want to do it? Damn what anybody else thinks. Damn what anybody else says. Go do it. You only have a certain amount of time on this world. Do everything that you possibly can. Do everything that you possibly want to do if it's available to you to do. That is exactly what CM Punk is doing, and I applaud him for it. And I wish him the best because I'm kind of excited about the possibilities of him fighting in the UFC, and if he gets his shit knocked out, he gets his shit pushed in. I can sit there and make endless types of go-to-sleep jokes. Just, you know, thinking about future content, what have you. But no, good for him. I'm not mad at him for it. I'm not angry for him about it at all. And to me, that's kind of what it reminds me of, is a guy going through a midlife crisis, and he's trying to grasp for his youth. But you know what? He's in a position where he can do it. You know, God bless him. Good luck to him. And... I've always viewed CM Punk as kind of a hypocrite in the sense that he said one thing and kind of done another, but we're supposed to uh, make excuses for it and apologize for it. You know, I've always kind of felt like that with him. You know, here's a guy that was supposed to be the voice of the voiceless, and the only person that he was a voice for was himself. A guy that talks about you know, when he's in the WWE that the main event is not necessarily the match that goes on last, but yet he'll turn around on Colt Cabana's podcast and talk about the match that is the main event is the match that goes on last. He'll talk about how this and this is what matters, but then it's about money and primarily about money and so on and so forth. But, you know, humans in nature were hypocritical creatures. I know I most certainly am. It's a very hypocritical world. A world full of hypocrisy and double standards. So that's just the way it is. But I'm actually proud of CM Punk for something. And that is understanding what he needs to do and learning the lessons from WWE and his experiences there and his time there. And understanding it's all about leverage and how much of it you have and how much of it you can impose upon the other party. Here's CM Punk. He's a basically a free agent. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Dana White, UFC, would like a big name like CM Punk. CM Punk has leverage. He doesn't have to do any fucking thing. He can choose to go here if he so desires. So now he can sit there and get the best deal he possibly can for himself and be in a situation where he can kind of dictate some terms. CM Punk's learning backstage politics. Much better than he ever exhibited while he was in the WWE. Now, I do find it interesting for a CM Punk who 
for years has kind of shit on the fact of Rock and Batista and part-timers like that coming back and being put into top spots, Brock as well. Um, what's he going to say about him signing with UFC? And basically, you know his first fight, whoever it's going to be against, whenever it's going to be, is going to be the headline feature attraction. We all know this. This is not an indisputable fact. We, or this is an indisputable fact, I should say. We know this is going to happen. So all this time where he spent all this time complaining about the part-timers and the guys that haven't paid their dues or haven't been on the road consistently like he has, they're here today but gone tomorrow. Well, you look at Punk, now here's a guy who's never fought at the UFC level and he's going to right away get big-time featured main event type of fights. Again, I applaud it in a way just because it's like he's fucking understanding how politics work. He's understanding the importance of leverage, if he has it, how much he has, and how he imposes it. That's a good thing. But it is kind of hypocritical because on the flip side, you can sit there and say, well, shouldn't you have to pay your dues? Maybe you should go on the ultimate fighter, do this, do that, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But that's a conversation for another time, another place, I suppose. So CM Punk's going off to UFC. I think what really tells me, though, that was very striking about this, is just how badly Dana White needs WWE. Oh, and I think that's true, and I think that's damn true. Because while so many UFC fans, who, by the way, used to be in large part pro wrestling fans, and they like to forget about that, and they like to disavow any knowledge of that previous life or existence, um, seem to think that UFC is so superior to WWE, and Dana White himself believes that the UFC is so superior to WWE in terms of the product and what it brings to the table. The fact of the matter is, is that so much of what the UFC does is patterned off of what pro wrestling has done, and in particular Vince McMahon and the WWE have done over the years. In terms of the pay-per-view business model, in terms of how they try to market and promote and advertise their product and their fighters to the people that they bring in to be the big-time box office draws. Dana White has needed WWE for years, frankly, to show him the way, and frankly, to kind of, in a way, bail his ass out. Because here is the truth about UFC today. <clears throat> Whether Dana White, the organization, the fighters, the fans want to acknowledge it or not, this is the truth about this company and their product right now. It's not that great. There is a definite period of transition. There's a huge problem in terms of name recognition when it comes to the UFC. And that matters, and that matters big time. To those hardcore MMA UFC fans that think it's just all about the fights and that's it, you're never going to convince them otherwise, but they're idiots if they think that that's all that matters because that's not all that matters. There's a lot more to it. It's about the machine behind it. It's about how you get the names out there. It's about the type of mainstream exposure you get and skip de skip and whoop de whoop well, you look at the UFC today, and you either have this. You have a situation where most of the previously well-known names and big stars over the past decade that have helped carry the company are either washed up, like Frank Mir, um, maybe Rashad Evans, perhaps, or they're no longer in the fold at all. The Randy Couture's, the Tito Ortiz's, the Rampage Jackson's, the George St. Pierre's, you know, a lot of these big stars, a lot of these guys that people have come to know from UFC over the years, they're no longer in the fold or they're not nearly as relevant as they once were. This is a huge problem for the company. And another huge problem is just in general, the overall lack of household names in that company. I love watching John Bones Jones, but there is no doubt in my mind, it is an unequivocal, indisputable fact that Ronda Rousey is like 10 times the bigger fucking star compared to John Bones Jones. Think about this. In an organization that is dominated by male fighters and dominated by male fans, even though there is a sizable female fan contingent for UFC, at the end of the day, easily their biggest box office draw and easily their biggest, most recognizable star is a woman. That's a good thing in terms of it shows the appeal and power of women in today's sporting world and in life in general. That's a good thing. But when you are the UFC and your fan base is still primarily male and your organization is filled with primarily male fighters, when your most recognizable name by far, your biggest star that gets you the most mainstream exposure by far and it's not even close as a woman, you've got a problem here. 
And for Dana White, he's had a problem with the UFC for years, being able to take some of his top fighters and truly turning them into household mainstream names. By far his biggest mainstream name, and I argue the only one that he has, is Ronda Rousey. It's a woman. None of his male fighters come close to that star power, that drawing power, and that name recognition on a mainstream household level like Ronda Rousey does. The last time he had that, out of a male fighter, frankly, whether UFC and MMA fans want to admit it or not, it is true. It was Brock Lesnar. It was the former WWE top guy. He was the big box office draw. He was the big mainstream household name. And again, this is not up for debate because this is truth. And even Dana White has acknowledged this. And even Dana White knows this. And the pay-per-view buy rates during Lesnar's time or during Lesnar's fights clearly demonstrate and indicate this. So Dana White has no choice. He has a trouble creating stars out of his own roster, especially in terms of his male fighters. He has a problem getting that mainstream exposure on his product because, by and large, certain groups of people still view it as human cockfighting, even though that's not an incredibly fair assessment. Some of these same people that sit there and uh, fight against this and call this human cockfighting, like John McCain once did, are the same people that advocate for wars because then, in that case, killing is justified and just fine. You know, UFC is nowhere near, mixed martial arts is nowhere near the worst type of thing in the entire world by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's a wonderful form of sport and can be a wonderful form of entertainment as well. But it does have a problem when it comes to getting mainstream exposure, even with the Fox television deal that they have. The fact of the matter is they need more stars, they need more fighters, they need more guys and individuals that could be big money draws, and the UFC just doesn't have it, and frankly for years has had a problem creating that. When you could bring in a guy from the WWE who was last seen on the practice squad of the Minnesota Vikings, and he instantly becomes your biggest draw and stays that way his entire time in your company, that's not a good thing long term. That's a bad thing. And it's a representation of the problems you have as an organization, getting household exposure, getting mainstream exposure for your product and for your talents. And now with CM Punk, here is similar to Brock Lesnar, a guy that comes in and instantly, beyond a shadow of a doubt, becomes your top money-drawing male fighter. Not even close. If you think John Bones Jones is going to draw more money for UFC than CM Punk, then you're a moron. If you think that this asshat or this great fighter or this lightweight champion is going to draw more money than CM Punk, you are an idiot. Dana White knows better. That's why he was so desperately pursuing CM Punk. He wanted to kind of give a little subtle jab and F you to Vince McMahon, surely. But he also knows that his product desperately needs the WWE because of so much of that... Stuff that he's done over the years has been patterned off of what the WWE has done. The path that the WWE has trailblazed. The path that the WWE has set other forms of entertainment down. Dana White has tried to mirror that. He's tried to mimic that. He's tried to copy that. He has done himself the best he possibly can to try and be the Vince McMahon of the mixed martial arts world. Again, these are not things that we really argue or debate because we know they're fucking true. So... For all the UFC people and for all the mixed martial arts fans that love to crap on pro wrestling and shit on pro wrestling, I say, okay, you can talk about it being scripted. You can talk about it being that. Keep in mind that anything that has a betting line always has an element of being fixed, rigged. Just keep that in mind. UFC is no better than any other sport when it comes to that. But furthermore, keep in mind that UFC wouldn't be half of the organization that is now if it didn't rip off his way of doing business from the WWE and once again didn't borrow a top guy from the WWE in order to become an actual big-time mainstream legit money draw for the company with Brock Lesnar and now in this case CM Punk. And that's a fact. CM Punk signed with UFC because in large part CM Punk knew he could get a big money payday for very little work maybe make more money than he ever did in the WWE. And Dana White knows at the end of the day that he still needs WWE. He needs them for their ideas. And most especially, especially, he needs some of their guys to draw some damn money. Period. 